Okay, we will call this meeting to order at 1.34 p.m. Rudy Castellano. Present. Mike Sweeney is excused. He called yesterday and said he wouldn't be able to make it. Mike Cousins. Here. Maria Gilberry. Here. Mike Martinez. Present. Travis Hearn. He's here. Travis is stepped out. He will be back. Yes. There is a quorum. Thank you, Sean. Motion for approval of the agenda. I so move. I'll second that. We have a motion by Rudy and a second by Mike Martinez. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. And it's a last meeting by Bella. Second that motion. I have a question, Mr. Chair. I'll put the vote. Yes, yes, yes. On the um, minutes and the business items, number four, uh, it says approval from the last meeting stands. Uh, we tabled it. Um, if it was already approved, why did we table it? And so I'd, I'd like to get some clarification from Maria or someone on this particular item. What page do you want to know was that? It's under business items um, in the minutes, number four. Before, Practically the last seven systems. I think I vaguely recall, but that's not the one. It was the rebid for the SCADA for, to INC Solutions. That was not the item that was tabled. Okay. The yeah, item that was number five. Number five. Yes. Did I put the wrong thing in there? No. No. Um. Still, it's, it, uh, I wanted clarification of that sentence. Uh, that it was already, what was the sentence? The sentence says approved from last meeting. The approval from last meeting stands. Uh, okay. The item so was pulled off the last meeting. It will be on the city of council agenda at tomorrow next meeting. So in the previous meeting, we had put it on the budget committee meeting and we all voted and approved it. Yeah. And then uh, there was a delay in the council. And so it went back again. And so this item was not for approval because we already approved it. And we just let you know that it was going to be at this council meeting instead of the previous month's council meeting. So we the action that we took was not um was the previous month, but it was not terrified on this. Uh, it, it was not a, a non-action item. It, it, the, it, so on here it says not for approval, so it was not an action item. Okay. The beginning of the report was not an action item, and it clarified in the narrative that it was because it had been we had performed an action on it in the previous month. Thank you. That makes sense. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Thank you. Well, I think I don't know what was it this one that you were talking about the um, um, no, no, that's just the pivot. I read that one also on that. That just stands. Okay. It was fine. All right. Thank you. Thank well, you. Well, we have a, we had a motion to approve the minute of last meeting by Mike Martinez and a second by Louis the All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Is there any public input? There is not any public input at this time. Or business items, committee recommendations for approval. Number one, recommend, recommendation for approval of addendum number three to contract 3617-2020 with Heath Consultants for Gas Portable Frame Survey. So Heath is our 
contracted services, consultant services that perform our gas system inspections. They're required annually. He just has been working very well for us for numerous years um, on testing and, and inventory of our gas system. And what I mean by gas system is we've got some lines and our service lines, uh, so the lines that they would inspect to make sure there's no gas leaks. If they do find a gas leak, our staff jump on them and address those, those leaks uh, right away. So he has been an excellent consultant and, and contractor for us. And we want to continue with those services. It is required. So we do have mandatory Sorry. services. So we do have mandatory services that need to provide for us. Are they um, covered? Do they cover themselves as part of insurance? Mm -hmm. No work is covered. Is insured. But not by the city, but no, themselves. Personal insurance. Our company is insured. Yeah, so it's Any other questions on business item number one? Yes. Uh, so they have been doing service with the city for a number of months, uh, couple of years? At least, at least eight years, if not longer. Oh, that one. Yes, they've been working for it. People have been working for the city for a Okay, because I noticed uh, the paperwork on this particular item was quite extensive. Um, why do they do they have to go through the whole nine yards again? So when they originally do the bid, they have to go through the whole process. Um, and it should have been pretty short. If you're seeing something wrong, you're seeing, on my computer. Okay, so these these were the documents that would have been provided to you. If you receive additional documents, it could be just the whole backup package between the initial RFP or the initial contract. Yeah, all I, the backup for this. That's not on the computer, but then it wasn't there. They, they may have because we'll provide the council all of the backup, the original contracts, um, the original responses to the income we did, all of the stuff. So it might have been a different company, which is much different. So the way I understand this, uh, we're not really getting it's just not it's just it's an addendum. So, um, every time we take a, a certain services out for bid, we can keep that one company up for four years on that request. That way, we're not spending a thousand dollars every single time we want to put it out to bid and get the same contract as long as they're meeting our needs. Put it out to bid once, and we three deadlines. So the first year is under the contract, and there's a deadline one, two, and three, which extend that contract up to four years. After four years, we have to go back up to bid, and that's of course the state procurement. So this is the third year. This is a dinner number three, so this will be the fourth year. So we will have to go out for proposals or bids after this. Yes, sir. It's been a recommendation or motion, I should say, for approval of the number three compact that needs uh, the Southeast for the uh, gas portable funding. So then, Okay, if we have a motion by Lucy, a second by Mike Martinez, all in favor? Aye. Okay, we move to the recommendation for approval to award RFP 2023 from 21 Allen Bradley programmable to color products and services to CAI automation and integration and interactive content. So we did put out an RFP for yes, integration services. We only had one proposal. We did put it out in uh, May. Of 2023, we opened in June of 2023. CAI was the only proposer. We did go look through their uh, proposal package and confirm that he does have all the requirements and certifications and training to be that company uh, to meet our needs uh, to be able to work on our graphics. Um, this will be the first time we've used this company, so we're, we're all, always interested in new companies. Um, so we'll, we'll bring them in, have them work on our uh, system. 
they continue to provide good services, then we will recommend that they continue. If they don't, then we will back up for for proposals for additional services. Who is the uh, the uh, oh, uh, Yeah, Pardon? Um, it could be. Uh, um, it's not far. It's I think it's not far outside of Colorado. Right, it's about forty-eight miles. I used to live about five miles from my east. Um, and there's that's the only bit that was the only proposal, yes. So, I know if you got over that, but he said, London, um, normally we use company called Yukon. Um, for some reason, we've had a really hard time and I haven't done respond to RFPs. This is probably about the 12th RFP. That we put out for the services over the last six years, and um, for some reason, I'm having a hard time getting on um, whether or not we do notify them, we notify everybody, but we put this proposal out, um, and they just either for some reason have not chosen to or not been able to propose. Um, we would like to continue to do UConn because they do good work for us. The, the challenge with PLC and program the logics and this type of integration is that they're highly prized. Services and so there's actually very few people to do it, and a lot of people that need it. A lot of companies and nations to do it. So, uh, for instance, the only two that I would say right now would be Alan Lab and you can and this company in Colorado. They have another integrator, uh, they do most of our test work, and then we have a third integrator, which is IC Solutions. So, uh, the IC Solutions is not proposed. Mountain Southwest has other contracts with us, but that's the primary as well. And then we find it out. But I've said over the last six or eight years, we found has done most of the work at the wastewater plant, and I and we were able to get them to follow through on the warrant. We'll have to relearn the process. No, 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 it's the same process. It's uh, programmable logics, it's like computer program. It's a computer language. So, as whoever's trained in the experience, they can do it anywhere in the country. It's the same type of So, they'll come in and they'll look at our system, see how we're set up, and they'll find the unit engine. I'd like to improve this data system. You know, it's one of that's been around for a while. And the way I understand it, there's jobs in Kansas City and also the Colorado Spirit. Yeah, but you were one of the people that found one of those areas that he's done with Jim, which is great. But in other words, it's not. What is it? Twenty years experience. Um, I believe it, that was when he learned his degree. Like I said, he did the through with the technical references, and we're going to find out what he knew. We will find out. See where he goes. We'll continue to, to try and get some local people, but if they don't respond, and some people call out of us, we need the services. So. That's, that's what it is. I don't. We'll, we'll keep trying to find ways. But when we directly call the vendor and say, hey, this proposal is going out, and call multiple vendors and tell the proposal to come out, we should probably post. Can't write them for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are aware of it, um, but it doesn't mean that they're not so swamped. Uh, as a matter of fact, that was one of our, one of our other vendors, because they had so much work, there's still just not enough time to pay and serve everybody that they offered. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a recommendation to the city that they approve uh, the award of REF. Uh, it's 2023-21 to add an item graphic programmable, programmable controller products and services. The CIA only mentioned their integration and uh, the solar mechanics are. Thank you. Thank you. No, do that. I am by Mike Martinez on there. I propose. All right. Uh, the item table for the draft. We might have that one. Excuse me, really quick, Maria. Yes. Okay. So thinking that was the item that was tabled, but it wasn't. It was the track back sludge removal, which I just handed out a copy of that to everybody. Okay. So, Sonny just handed to you 
which says request to rebid track tax select. Yes. So I, I was informed that after last week's meeting, or during last week's meeting, there was a question and a comment regarding trying to make sure that we award to local people and we can't award to local people. Yes. So that first guidance that we have is state return. So we it has we do have limitations on state procurement about the process when it comes to an RFP or an RFP. In this case, this is an RFP request for bid. In a request for bid, uh, you must take the lowest bidder. Um, the only reason why we would not take a low bidder is if there is documented issues with that vendor, and the council would have to make that call. We'd have to make sure that we have everything documented so that if they chose to file a complaint uh, that it would be a justified the reason why we didn't go with the OSB. Otherwise, uh, we must go with the OSB. There are, uh, there are some things in RFPs that we had set up for trying to give a little bit of room to some local vendors. And one of the things we have to, if we're going to do that, it has to be written in the proposal that way. That if you are a loss, if you are a bidder from Las Vegas, you can get a five percent. And the councils did approve that, by the way. That we had that ability to do that, but in addition to the council's approval, that you that the, the city will allow for a third in the front where it, it's basically giving people a uh, preference whether they're veterans or whether it's local business or the next local business. The council did approve that it is in our ordinance, so we are allowed to do that. The second part of that component is it has to be in the proposal that if you are a local bidder, you will get a 5% reference. Mm -hmm. If you are a veteran, you will get a 5%. So that not being in there, we could not do that. So those are the things. First is we have to make sure that we're following state rules. Second, anything that's in here cannot be, we, we can't just wing it. It has to be physically written in the proposal so all vendors see the same thing. Oh, yeah. The oh, third, yeah. the third component to that is federal funding. Federal funding actually has stipulations about preferences, and I'm trying to get the language from the EPA right now that if any bids or proposals include preferences, you may not be able to use federal funding for them. They don't want preferences in some areas to be used as a determining factor. They want low price and quality. So I'm, I'm trying to get that language from the EPA because I'm dealing with that in a different area where I have a current engineer under a current contract, and I want to use that current contract to plan and design a project that's going to be funded by, by the federal government. But before I can do that, the EPA is going to have to approve an existing contract under the process that we followed. And one of the question marks is can we allow the purposes when they may not be able to use that. So that's where local preferences we should be tried, but it can also be in there so funding. So our goal is to make sure that we're following the federal policy and federal procurement if it's federal funding. In this case, this project is being funded under state law and funds. Who makes the determination on this whether they want to the preference or not? Uh, so on the RFPs. On the RFPs First, we want to make sure that it's not a, a violation of the funding policy. Right. So they got a say in it, the procurement has a say in it, and then myself and my staff will, will have that as an option. Yeah. Uh, in this case, they it was not included in the proposal, so everybody had a a good playing field, and state procurement requires it to go the lowest proposer and the lowest proposal distance. And if you would have had it could be that the other person could have gotten it. Uh, if we had done a state uh, preference, they both would have Mexico. Oh, they both would have in Mexico. Yes. Right. So it's not necessarily a, a local preference. It's for the state. Of we can do a local preference, can do a state preference, can do veterans preferences. There are different preferences you can do. Um, I would go back. We would go back to the current rules before we do that. And anything that's funded. It's submitted to the funding agency before we do that to set it out to make sure that we're not, uh, to make sure that we're looking for the rules. So, so you're saying it's a shared determination? It's a tiered determination? Shared, shared. For, um, so I'm answering when it's a tiered determination, but the, okay. the funding agency could say absolutely not. Right. And then, then I have no say in it if you want to use that. Those funds. Uh, if they say it's okay, then we will look at the project and 
and I would prefer to get both the preferences as long as it doesn't hinder the funding and hinder the future award. We have awarded projects before, and there's a funding agency so that can after that and look at the documents and say, we can't fund this because this was or was not in the documents. So we send all these documents to the funding agency and we submit them to make sure they're okay. Just for the So then it might be where the people on that do we have more. That was on oh, it was on the council's agenda for last month and we can take it to council and it was awarded and TLC is already is under contract. Any more discussion items? Yeah, I think we're good. So we have a little bit of an update on all of our, our projects. We do have a lot of projects going on, so if anybody has a specific question, uh, I think maybe I'll, I'll get a high level on the most critical ones. Obviously, the ones that are impacting custom in the roadway. Hot springs, we finished the paving. There is a question about uh, some of the the land home, the hospital, so we're looking into that. And the water project portion is uh, we just completed the permit application with DOT. We had done this process before. We had to change the location of the water line, so we had to use the permit to DOT. And we did coordinate with DOT. Before we even bothered to submit the permit, we wanted to make sure we had everybody was aware of the project issues, tried to address them all before we submit the permit. Otherwise, it can be a tedious process. Sending you the city of the so it needs everybody to be this. So we did work with your team to meet the requirements and then come in at this sign over the last few days uh, by us. And it, so it's now they just made it back to the group. Um, and that's for the crossing of the house. We're going to have cross the house and sort of do the So that's the proper but there are some high-ends that are happening, so additional water line installation, tapping is part of that project. The main part of the project is discussing those, and that's scheduled to be the end of the DOT is finalized, so from <laughs> no. Right, so now we're going to go straight across, it looks like we're going to go ahead and trench. Uh, the contract will trench across mills, and then we'll leave approximately half of the mills open because it transitions from mills to the church to the next mill. So that we'll still be able to have traffic from one direction. Uh, the other direction will be um, will be bypassing still out. The project will be able to work on one side at a time, but it may be going back and forth working on the south side and the north side and the south side until they ever take them down. The the boring became a concern with the, the, the minimum space that they had to work with with other utilities. Excavation was discussed and the OT is supported as it'll be coming down I'm saying down. It, it depends on which direction they're going, but we'll be bringing them down hot springs and around that intersection. It'll be on the west side of the hot springs mills intersection where the water spots between. Back corner and the also yeah, we'll have signage out with the PSA now. We'll make sure it looks like well. We did the contractor and engineer, and we're discussing traffic control going all the way back to North Grand, and we're going to be on the south side so that we let any traffic go well before they got there. So, there were some features there. Mm -hmm. so like you want to consider the crossing will be on the west side of mills and then the west side of hot springs but then the mills yes possibly or and then they have to cross it to the other side later or? yes yeah that's why we wanted to do the mechanical and board we wanted to get across to the east side of hot um, 65 because eventually we're going to do a project of 65. um the with all the utilities in the intersection it was uh, between the water, the gas, the sewer, and the utilities, they would not have been able to do straight forward without uh, impacting something. So, um, 
we decided to go up the west side and then we teach the project and we'll have to cross over to the east side. Oh, we're not going to do the crossing. We'll, we're going to cross to the north side of Mills and do the tie in there, and then we'll stop until we do the second portion of the project, which would be to move it to the east side, take it to the east side. So we're not going to know where the crossing is in the other side. The future crossing, uh, no, it'll most likely be somewhere in that area because. Uh, where they're finishing their floor, we're going to go for a single. Sorry, um, by the way, the purpose of it is an eight inch and a ten inch. We want to get away from the two, the two separate lines. So we're putting a sixteen inch. And we'll go up to a point, and then it's going to split again back to the current existing eight and ten inch. So that's the location where we'll either continue farther up on the west side, or we'll cross over to the east side. So that would be based on the conversations with distribution. The engineer, DOT, because uh, we, we would still be in the vicinity of the intersection, so we'll make sure everybody is just going to be a future project. Probably future. I'll press it. So, yeah, so you want to have some. I don't know if you want to have some. Well, we're in the, the report. Oh, are we in the, the report? report? Yeah, we're in the monthly report. But uh, I figured that we could just well do the monthly work ourselves, whatever data that was already involved with whatever the property. I don't want to read the monthly report to you guys, but if you guys have to do the question, I just some of which uh, there was there was a play in the pickup of the probably waste on animal street. And uh, I was reading what it says that you know, short fibers. So we have, a, you know, have three. we have a few challenges at Solvers. One is the minimal employees. We did just hire the employees, but they're brand new. And it will take a while for them to learn the residential commercial route. So no process for all. They all have CDLs. So they can close requirements. They're able to operate heavy equipment. But we, it, even when you can operate heavy equipment, you're operating. Uh, a very dangerous piece of equipment, maybe sending you people and vehicles. So we don't just hand somebody a set of keys and say, go for it. They get months of training. Before the supervisor or manager will say that he trusts them uh, to be operating this heavy equipment in areas where they get damaged vehicles. Um, so just, we have three new drivers, doesn't mean that this, that issue will be solved right away. They're going to be two people per vehicle for a while. And they'll start getting a new person opportunity. So you'll be writing. Yeah. So that's how they're going to learn. Yeah, and they're along that same the call in, the call ins are people that just can't make it to what they're doing. So, so it's minimal minimal staffing. It is uh, staffing that has been around for a while. Maybe some of them have issues. If you have one employee that had a major issue, we do have a couple of them, like you said. Uh, as, as we all get older, we start to have health issues and have uh, medical symptoms that we have to take care of. And sometimes uh, it may not get us until that one day. And so, like Paul had said, and when you have very few people, uh, a single call that can, can really impact just all the ways. So, um, so that's what we put in addition, then we also have these equipment challenges. So, whatever we have, we'll have all our phones go out or piece of equipment get damaged or over something like that. It also attracts um, our ability to pick up from um, That's one issue. So that's the drivers and the equipment and the routes. The other challenge that we're doing is the solidness is the volume. So we have a tipping floor, which is where residents can bring in their trash, pick up the tipping floor, and they put it into a trailer and they haul it to wagon racks. We are having dump trucks, you know, dump, off, dump truck loads of trash. Contractors, commercial, and even residents to bring in trailers. So, what's happening is along with our regular routes, we have all this additional waste that's coming in, some from the county, some from the city, some from who knows where. Um, it can fill up that tipping floor if we're not hauling this quickly for bringing in. So, that's where the two work together. We don't have enough drivers to, to haul and grab the bike when we need all the equipment's operational or for him to large. 
suddenly that then result in us having holes off the floor. We always need to make sure that there's room for the commercial and residential house. So those can't stop. Um, and then and then we also cannot buy without permit, which limits how much we can have uh, on the field. So those all that stuff together is kind of results in a little bit of a challenge. I mean, yeah. it's, unfortunately, we close a lot more often than we would like. But one, we don't want to buy another permit. Two, we don't want anybody to get injured. So one of one of our things that we've been working on recently is we've asked contractors for their making dump truck loads you know, to take it directly to Wagon Town. So they don't take up that amount of space on the floor that could be used by, by residents. So that's one way we're trying to minimize it. Um, more staffing, more equipment, more runs could help as well. A larger floor would help, except for we still need to be able to haul it off. So it gives the appearance of more space. And you still need the people that yeah, yeah. more of the space filled up. <laughs> well, the reason one of the reasons things I was looking at thinking about is that if you have um, a mantle and there is a and expect they have a fire and all of this stuff is getting all this cash from that by contractors, wouldn't they not be able to appropriate some funding to help you guys get more trucks, more floor space? So what what FEMA does is if you need something that's for that particular emergency, they can help with it. But something like, let's say they were to buy us a Packer truck. But a Packer truck has a, let's just say it has a five, seven year lifespan, whatever it is. For us, it seems to be about three, three to five years. But let's say it has a five year lifespan. Mm -hmm. We would have to show that for those five years, all the trash that was hauling were waiting for that purpose. Otherwise, we're going to expect you to pay a permanent portion of that equipment for things that are not waiting for. As an example, that's that's a very high level explanation. People don't pay for you getting a piece of equipment that used for something other than the emergency. Yeah. So if you get a dump truck and on um, one year it hauls burnt structures, so you could probably justify it from one year. But for the other nine years, you're gonna have to pay nine tenths of it. Okay. And the process that you go through with FEMA could result in it may not be worth the fight that one tenth of a year to pay for it. Um, because FEMA is responsible to make sure that FEMA funds are used for the emergency and the latest emergency is not just. Um, but so the solution was to answer, that's to answer your question, but the solution is that contractors may just need to haul to Wagon Mountain and charge their customers for hauling to Wagon Mountain instead of using the floor that could be used for residences, people that just want to bring in a couple of door couches and a few bags of trash. And are being hindered from it because another contract is bringing in a, a burnt shed or a demolished shed and uh, a dump truck. Well, it would be great. We don't want to not have that, 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 but at the same point, we also don't want to turn away 30 residential customers from something one point. It's, it's not easy, but uh, it, it is a challenge to work with. We do have three employees who are excited about that. Um, our manager did the solvers benefit recently um took the job as the community development director so the supervisor is setting up uh, what we're saying setting up into the interim manager's position so we're just moving in both of them he's able to get ideas to trash so the trash move applying into the trash process moving taking it in and getting rid of it i think people could sometimes be amazing uh, it's a thousand tons and that doesn't include when we take down the building. Take down a building, we actually bring the land lot to you. And we did recently do that just so you know, we did take down a couple of homes that were dilapidated uh, and be knocked down, and we hauled them directly by the house. Uh, I have not done an assessment of fuel cost. I mean, there, there would be a cost to whoever hauls it up there, either we're paying for that cost or, and then pass it on to the customer or the customers. Well, and, and I, I, yeah, absolutely not. And so maybe more communication with the contractors to say it would be beneficial if, if you added that charge to the service for the customer. And 
So they have to be people that are then in, in supervisory positions at that power place. You have to back up with people like the and enforce whatever needs to be enforced. So we have three, three or four experience drivers. Yeah, four experience drivers. Yeah. 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 And then three new drivers they have had equipment and large vehicle experience. So that we can do that. So so whenever we've had that, when we've had restrictions for that customer service at that moment, they know who they have um, do you have any project status of in independence? What we're waiting for there is uh, we needed a we need the contractor was not part of the original project to excavate and locate some residential services that are on the north side of the independent soil that was installed. They are currently tied into the old line, or we need to tie them into the new line. The new line is 13 foot deep, and we'd rather not tie them back into a 15 foot depth sewer line. So we want to find a location. There are no cleanouts, so they've been unable to locate them without physically excavating. Uh, and then there is a sewer line that's in the 18 alley, just to the east of these series of homes. Uh, we would like to tie them into that line, but, but the contractor needs to excavate and do some assessment. So we did a we offer them to other services. We'll have to make a decision after that. So, what this, these services were not on any map or anything else for us to utilize. They were actually tied into that property. So, that's that's adding a little bit extra to independence. And we don't want to cash pay independence until we find out what we're going to do. And the old It's still operational. And what we'll do is, um, that's it for the budget that is unless somebody had a well we did just reward track back and just awarded Stata so it's pretty excited. Stata for what's in but so we're pretty excited to be building on all this. You'll see where we have all these projects that are in progress. We did get several sewer lines completed. Is that some more projects? I'm with Lux. Okay, we'll move to the bomb guns in the air. I do not. Then the comments in the thing like my goodness. I know you don't really. I know you don't. On the uh, on the water status now in terms of the uh, water. You know, I think we have what stage are we at? Zero. Zero, which you can see. Um, it still means there are limitations. You can't water in your yard every day. But you can water in your yard. There's specific days and times. This is the lowest level that Las Vegas goes to. Uh, so we, the city of Las Vegas does not need to plug you can plug your any time, any day, for any amount. State zero does say it's odd and even days, odd and even addresses, um, and even morning, and even day. So there is no water crisis? There is a caution. I would not, I would, I wouldn't want to use the term crisis, I would want to use caution. Which let me let you know there, there's a little bit of a, a catch 22 with this. Albuquerque experiences the worst there since. The, the public stepped up tremendously in what we started with one of the events who were finding ways to minimize the water usage and we're also trying to minimize water waste. Our system requires water to flow. Water needs to flow to the kind of freshest water in the line. If people don't use the water, the water sits and stagnant, and then they end up with lower and lower. That plus our revenue. The less water we use, the less water we sell, the less revenue. We so those are two things that we're dealing with right now. One is the drop in revenues. Two is the water is not flowing as quickly as we'd like it. 
So that results in us having to go out and open hydrants with flush lines to force the water to flow, therefore putting water out through the gravel will keep the heaters. And there is a time when we want them to conserve. We don't want people to go crazy. Just turn all the faucets on and we go down today. Um, so we <laughs> that, that those are some of the challenges we're working with, and we're, we're trying to find ways to address those. Um, Travis's crew, uh, along with some support from the public works, removed probably 20% of it. They removed a lot of the sediment up above the end to make room for additional sediment they didn't start down the river. They did do, do some like that would be good. Last week, we had a small floor of water from the university over the top. Maybe we can put it further to the top from the second list. We're talking over storm to where? Was it after like a rainstorm? Yes. So, what's your question? So, what you see coming through the city is that there's no energy there from other irrigation. So, there is the city's diversion, and there would be the story diversion. There would be a sequia that's after the story of Bergen, and then there's a sequia off the river adjacent to the story of Bergen. So, not off the story of Bergen, but actually off the river. So, there are individual versions off the river that give us like a story of Bergen. Some of the water is getting to the story of Bergen. They're not supposed to take much right now because there's such a low flow, but the way it just seems like some of the more in the story. Um, because of the contours of the river, but the way I think the, the during the rotation schedule they'll have the things that will have the river gate open for the assemblies. Um, and try to get a lot of things during their portion of the rotation schedule. Remember, this is the time of year when we're on a rotation schedule where we'll have three days off, three days off, uh, um, for the city, so you can't take a lot of things in this. And the assemblies also have a little bit, but for the amount of money it fell. Is it being heard of among those things? I think it didn't need to in my mind. It well, might be we're seeing, uh, one, it depends on where it falls. For instance, the, one of the most recent rainstorms actually fell on the mountains adjacent to Peterson, and we have a lot of water entered Peterson and Verge. So it depends on where the water falls. It doesn't mean sometimes it seems like there's a storm, but it may not be on the drainage to. The river. About two or three weeks ago, there was a pretty big storm for a lot of sending down to Sebastian Can. And the river spiked before a very short period of time. Like four hours. And then it went right back. It's very low flow. So okay. it, it's, hard to, it's hard to answer your question because it, it depends on the location of the rain, on the quantity of the rain. Okay, if there's no other questions or comments, I just I Thank you.